What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about VST plugins and how to install them into FL Studio. Um, a VST plugin is basically um, a plugin that's either an effect, like a reverb, a compression, uh, that type of thing, or it's an instrument, uh, like popular um, VST instruments out there are like the Albino, uh, Sample Tank, Halion, uh, Contact, uh, etc. So uh, some of these um, plugins have uh, installer programs. Plugins like Sample Tank or Halion or Contact that are made by big companies usually have an installer that you run and then it takes you step by step through a uh, a, a process of saying okay where do you want to put these you know what do you want to install blah 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 and then you have to put in all your serial numbers and all that stuff and and go through the whole process but it kind of walks you through the process uh, other times uh, especially with the uh, freeware plugins you don't get an installer you're basically getting a file that you open up like a zip file or a, a RAR file and you open it up and inside are the files you need to then copy somewhere and then tell FL Studio what to do with them and etc and that's pretty much what I'm gonna cover in this particular tutorial so to get things started I want to talk about uh, where the plugins are, are normally located and where FL Studio normally looks for plugins the first place I want to talk about is uh, within the FL Studio install when you install it it goes somewhere and in this case uh, you can see I've installed in the C program files image line FL Studio 6 and then after FL Studio installed it created a plugins slash VST folder in other words a, a plugins folder and then within the plugins folder a VST folder and then inside that VST folder are some of the uh, FL Studio uh, default plugins like the 7 band EQ the blood overdrive the fruity compressor etc these DLL files are the plugins and then these RTF files are some kind of extra info maybe it's a help file or something like that but the DLL is the important one that's the actual file that does the work but FL Studio <coughs> knows to look in this location because it knows where it was installed and then like I said it makes these two folders and then installs the files into them so that's the first location that you need to be aware of this is where where FL Studio looks this is one area where FL Studio looks and if you wanted you could install your plugins into this folder however I don't recommend you do that because if you upgrade to FL Studio 7 in the future now all of your plugins are here under FL Studio 6 and now you have to copy them all into FL Studio 7 and then you may want to leave them here in FL Studio 6 because you might have old projects that you want to you want to keep FL Studio 6 installed in case you need to get to those old projects in the future or something right so it could be a hassle to have to remember to copy everything over keep a duplicate etc etc so I would recommend not using this location the next location that I want to tell you about is the Steinberg VST plugin location. <clears throat> now, in my case, uh, I have a C program file Steinberg VST plugins, and if you're if you got a sharp eye, you'll notice I have an underline right after my word VST plugins. Normally, that is not there. I put that there for a specific reason because I didn't want this directory, the directory being used. So just by putting that underline. I made it so it's it's not used anymore. It's it's still on my hard drive, but none of these plugins are are available or showing up anywhere because I renamed it. So for for the sake of argument, let's pretend like this underline character right here at the end doesn't exist and that the the real uh, directory name is just C program files Steinberg VST plugins. Now you can see in here I've installed various plugins and they they installed into this location and you can see them listed here most of them are in their own folder and if I scroll down you can see I've got a lot that I just threw into that folder without worrying too much about uh, putting them in their own folder and over time they start to build up and uh, accumulate there and it's not a really a good idea just to throw them all in the same folder so um, 
be aware of that. But this is the second location uh, that you should be aware of. That's the uh, C program file Steinberg VST plugins. And this location is basically when Steinberg, uh, who is the company that invented VST plugins, and uh, when they first did it, this is where they put their plugins under program files Steinberg VST plugins. So what happened was when people started making their own VST plugins, they would just basically install them right into this folder as well. And that worked out okay for a lot of people. But nowadays, um, some people are going to install VST plugins without even owning a Steinberg product, which means that this folder doesn't exist when they first go to install a VST plugin. And then you can choose a different location if you want. So this is kind of a carryover from the original specifications of the VST plugins. So be aware that this directory may exist on your system. And if it does, you may want to use this as your location for VST plugins. Okay, But you can also do a third option, which is what I do. And that third option is to basically use your own folder. And in this particular option, what you're going to see uh, on the screen here is that I have a drive letter a hard drive letter Y and uh, yeah that's way up there in the alphabet because this particular drive is a uh, external drive in other words I can plug it into my USB port on one computer and it shows up as drive Y and I could take it to another computer plug it in and set it up so that it shows as drive Y on the other computer and the reason why that's useful to me is because now I have a way of carrying all my plugins around with me and they always look the same on, on whatever computer I'm running them on. But in my case, it's on Y Audio VST plugins. You could make your own folder on any drive that you have on your computer. You want to make it on your C drive? Go right ahead. Make C VST plugins. Make it C Audio VST plugins. Make it C Crap. You know, whatever you want, you can just make a folder and determine that's where you're going to put your VST plugins and put them there. I would recommend that you uh, also put each one in, in its own folder just to keep things uh, very clean and separated. Um, it also helps when you're dealing with patches for the various uh, plugins because, uh, for example, uh, Albino, uh, which is here uh, you can see the albino DL, DLL there uh, it looks for its patches in, in a certain location which is here by default albino 2fx by having all these patches in in a subfolder uh, you can see they're separated from all those other files because it sure would suck to be in the main folder and then just see all kinds of files you don't know what belongs to what you know like if I go down here I have a few that are actually just running loose in here. Uh, I can tell what most of them are because it's only a few. But like th these two demo uh, effects, uh, I think they're effects. I don't even remember what, what they are. But, you know, I don't know who made them, where they belong, if there's any patches for them, what other files in this they may need, you know. I mean, I could make educated guesses at all that. But if I just put everything in its own folder, I wouldn't even have to worry about guessing at it at all. So... I make my own folder and I use it and I'm going to show you how you set that up in FL Studio. It's really easy and that's why I think everybody should do this uh, whenever possible. Okay, so what you want to do in FL Studio is you want to go to Options, File Settings and within these file settings you're going to see two basic areas. You're going to see the top area which has a lot of uh, spaces for you to do folder names. That's used for um, your sample browser that's that has nothing to do with your VSTs directly what we're interested in is down here this section it says VST plugins extra search folder okay, what that means is uh, FL Studio is going to search any known locations like it might search its own VST folder which we saw it might search uh, Steinberg's VST folder which we saw but it's also going to search this folder which in this case it's my Y audio VST plugin it's my custom folder for all my VST plugins so all I need to do is set this once 
and it's done. If I go into FL Studio 5, which I still have installed on this machine, it's also pointed at uh, this folder. So I didn't have to reinstall any of my plugins. I just had to point my new version, my FL6, at this location, and it got everything uh, as though it were FL5, which has been using it for a couple years already, you know, just fine. So that's why I recommend you, you go this route. So we've set up our VST extra search folder. And then what we want to do is uh, actually let's download something. So I bring up my browser. And here I've gone to a site called tweakbench.com. There they have some free VST instruments and effects. Um, and this particular one, uh, it's uh, called Triforce. And Triforce is a VST instrument, and this instrument um, emulates the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, console music chip. Basically, back in the old days, uh, before Xbox 360 and even the Xbox and the PS1 and uh, Nintendo 64 and going back, back, back uh, in time, uh, there was the Nintendo, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And all it could really produce for sound was blips and bleeps and things like that and because it, it had a sound chip in it, and that's all it was capable of doing. It could do nothing close to uh, real samples. You know, like if you had an explosion in the game, it just sounded like some static or something, you know, like uh, static just chopped up or something. Uh, but anyway... Um, that's what this particular plugin does. It emulates th that sound uh, chip. So I'm going to download the plugin, and it's going to ask me what do I want to do with the file. I'm sure all of you know how to download files, so I'm not going to cover that too much. But I'm just going to go ahead and open this file, and it happened to be a zip file. You know, it could have been a raw file, it could have been uh, maybe some other compressed file, it could have even be been an executable. Uh, in which case it would go through a wizard or some other process. But in this case, it was a zip file. So what it did is it opened the zip file and it's showing me, hey, there's two files inside of here. Now I have to say what, what I want to do with these two files. And what I want to do is extract the two files. Uh, by the way, if you don't know how to extract files, uh, I'm not going to do a tutorial on that. So you're going to have to learn how to do that somehow. But what I would recommend if you want a good program to uh, unzip and unrar and uncompress just about any type of file that you're going to run across is this Power Archiver 2004. Actually, I think they're up to 2006. I bought this program back when it was in 2004, and uh, it's it's never given me any problems. So, uh, you know, if you want to just get the 30-day demo of it or whatever, try it out, you know. Uh, go ahead and do that. But this is a good program because you don't need two programs. Like some people use WinRAR and WinZip and some other, you know, they got separate programs for all the different types. This is just one program. It does all the types. So anyway, so now I'm going to extract this and it's going to ask me where do I want to put it and I'm going to tell it uh, basically to put it in Y Audio VST Plugins and then I'm going to tell it, oh, by the way, add another folder in there called Triforce and throw it in there. Now by doing this I'm basically categorizing it automatically on my hard drive. In other words, I know all my all my uh, files for this particular plugin are going to go in their own folder and that's how I like to keep it nice and clean. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, extract all files, overwrite any existing files, uh, and then open the folder after you're done extracting it. And when I hit extract, it's going to do its business. And now it's opened the folder. You can see it's at Y Audio VST Plugins folder, Triforce folder. And inside of there, I have Triforce.dll and my info.txt, which were in the zip file. So now my, my files are located there on, the, uh, on my drive. So now let me close these programs up. And uh, let's get back to FL Studio. And we'll bring up the... Uh, <coughs> the step sequencer and now I'm going to add that instrument here into my step sequencer so I'm going to say channels add one and then it's not going to be on my list usually because I just added it so I'm going to say more and then I get this dialog box that has a list of all my plugins 
and or at least all the ones that FL Studio knows about at this moment in time. And one of the things we're going to see is that even though they're, they're in alphabetical order, Triforce is not here. I see Tube Screamer. That's the only thing that begins with a T. So Triforce should have been between Citrus and Tube Screamer, but it's not there. And the reason is FL Studio only scans for new plugins when you tell it to. Otherwise, when it starts up, it would always have this delay and it wouldn't, you know, people wouldn't like that because no one likes to wait, right? So what we need to do is we need to click refresh and then we can do one of these two modes. Um, use the recommended mode at all times. Uh, the other one is okay to use, but what it does is it loads the uh, VST. In other words, it'll start scanning when it finds a VST plugin. It'll actually try to load it into memory and then unload it just to verify that it loads. It takes a long time for it to go through, you know, you can see I've got probably, what, 100 VST plugins. It'll take a long time to go through that. Also, some of them may load and then pop up a box or something and, and, and expect you to do something with it and will cause it to hang the program. And that's why it says unsafe, because if the thing doesn't work for some reason, uh, it could lock up your FL Studio. So always do fast scan recommended. I'm going to go ahead and click that. It ran and it did some work, came back and it told me one new plugin was found. Now if I scroll down, sure enough I see between Citrus and Tube Screamer, I see Triforce. They even labeled it in red so that it stands out a little bit more and I can see what the new plugin was. That way I don't have to go, oh gee, what was there before? It's really easy for me to see. So now I'm going to double click that. <coughs> And what it's done is it's added a Triforce channel. Now I can even see it brought up the wrapper. The Fruity wrapper is basically what it uses to load uh, all your external plugins. You can see it brought it up. I can tweak all these parameters if I need to. Uh, in addition, this is just like any other FL Studio channel in that it's got a channel settings window. And if I, uh, if I choose to maybe preview the sound, you know there you go that's the that's the cheesy little uh, Nintendo sound that's coming out of there um, after you install a plugin it may also have presets available to it and this particular plugin you, you notice on the interface itself there's nowhere that it says load preset some plugins might have a little browser window where it shows the preset name in there this one doesn't but I can still get to the presets by clicking on this button here in the corner of the uh, wrapper and then it has a menu called preset <clears throat> and then on that menu are all the presets for this particular plugin so I can select one called let's say try arp I select that now let's hear what this one sounds like compared to before so you can hear it's got a different sound obviously so it's a different patch that I've loaded into my triforce plugin and there you have it and now I can use this in whatever uh, projects I want. I can save the project. It'll save the plugin in there with it. It'll reload the plugin when I reload my project, and uh, all is well. So there's how you load a plugin into FL Studio. Uh, hopefully, if you didn't know how to do it, you know how to do it now, and then, or maybe you've learned a new trick or two uh, with regards to using your own custom VST plugin folder. And uh, you can take that info, make your workflow uh, better, faster, stronger, and uh, help you worry less about the small details and more about just creating a dope beat. So there you have it. I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.